Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and welcome to the 130th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. All right, now to start off before we begin, I just wanted to say that I will be discussing details pertaining to the giveaway more toward the end of this episode, so just be sure to stick around for that. All right, and first stop, if you've recently jailbroken your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch on iOS 6, 6.0.1, 6.0.2, 6.1, 6.1.1, or 6.1.2, and you don't quite know what to do with your jailbroken device and Cydia, then just be sure to check out my new Top 5 Tweaks video. I'll have a link to that down below in the more info, and I've also previously done two other videos for iOS 6 Cydia tweaks that have recently been updated to include support for the latest firmwares as well as the latest iOS based devices. And the first one was a list of 15 tweaks, the second one was a list of 10, and the new one is a list of 5. So I'll have links to all of those down below in the more info. Again, just be sure to check them out if you don't know quite what to do yet with your jailbroken iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch. All right, now also earlier this week, Bloomberg published a new report suggesting that Apple may be gearing up to release a post-PC smartwatch as early as this year, 2013. Moreover, Bloomberg's unnamed source provided additional details as to the possible functions of a smartwatch, including the ability to both make and screen calls, view location coordinates, track various lifestyle and health-related data, and more. And in a similar article, The Verge revealed additional alleged iWatch details, suggesting that the device will run a full version of iOS instead of the watered-down operating system like the one found on Apple's iPod Nano. But realistically, how full can an operating system for a smartwatch really be? Given how small the touchscreen display will inevitably be, there are obvious limitations to what such a device will be capable of. However, it's entirely possible that a specific app store and dedicated third-party apps will evolve from a watch-exclusive version of iOS. And if you guys want more details on the rumored post-PC device, just be sure to check down below. I'll link you to the complete article. All right, and moving on, according to a recent report from a Japanese blog, Foxconn is preparing to ramp up production on the forthcoming iPhone 5S, which can be manufactured using the same production lines as for the current iPhone 5. The article also suggests that while Japan's main cellular provider doesn't currently carry the iPhone, the company has cut back on Android phone orders for the fall 2013 season, suggesting that the carrier may offer the next generation iPhone within the vague August through October time frame. And additionally, it was also reported on the same day by iMore that the iPhone 5S will be released sometime this August, making for a late summer, early fall launch, which aligns perfectly with the newly rumored launch schedule. Also, the iPhone 5S is said to be a similar upgrade as the iPhone 4S was, offering the same body style as the iPhone 5 and mostly featuring internal upgrades. So at this point, the next generation iPhone is rumored to come equipped with an upgraded processor, which is expected of every iPhone refresh, as well as an improved camera sensor, either an improved LED flash or a dual LED flash system, and while it seems a little far-fetched, an integrated biometric fingerprint scanner in the traditional home button. Next up, it's rumored that Intel's plans to manufacture chips for other companies may include Apple as a future customer for their A-series iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad chips. Currently, Apple is heavily reliant on their major competitor Samsung when it comes to processors for their post-PC iOS devices. Now, while the advantages of a partnership between Intel and Apple are obvious, if you want additional details, just be sure to check out the complete article. All right, and finally, according to DigiTimes, both Apple and Samsung are rumored to unveil wireless charging solutions for their flagship smartphones within 2013. Now, while DigiTimes industry sources claim that Samsung will most definitely utilize Qi inductive of charging technology, which is the current inductive power standard, Apple is allegedly developing their own proprietary wireless charging technology. And it's said that Samsung's remedy for wireless charging will likely be sold as a back panel accessory that can be easily interchanged with the stock back cover. Unfortunately, the report was rather vague when it comes to Apple, stating that they weren't clear whether the company would build the technology directly into their devices or take the accessory approach, like Samsung is rumored to. Although, given Apple's high quality standards, if they decide to implement wireless charging capabilities in their next generation mobile devices, the technology will likely be built directly into said devices, and this will allow them to incorporate it in a way that doesn't compromise the design. All right, and that's it for this episode. As for the $100 iTunes gift card giveaway, I did randomly select 
select a winner and I have contacted them. Now, if you weren't chosen this time, don't worry. I am starting a new giveaway. Just be sure to rate this video up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. However, I have yet to decide what to give away. I'm stuck between a $100 iTunes gift card and a $100 Amazon gift card. So I'll leave two comments down below in the comment section. Just be sure to rate up whichever one you want me to give away more, either the Amazon or the iTunes gift card. And also, don't forget to just rate this video up if you liked it and for the giveaway. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos. And for the question of the day, just be sure to let me know down below or on Best Tech Info whether or not you'd be more likely to buy the iPhone 5S if its main features include a biometric fingerprint scanner and wireless charging technology. Finally, to be updated more often, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me in one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.